Hi everybody and welcome to Accounting 101. I just want to kind of walk you through some orientation material and the syllabus and make sure everybody is um, is ready to go here. Uh, so this is the orientation material that you'll find. There's a, This is posted in the um, Start Here lab. I just want to kind of go through here. Again, as I said in the other one, everything is done in my accounting lab. So uh, as long as you're logged in there, you'll have everything you need. Um, if you've never taken an online course before, you should be aware that um, it will probably take more time or more of your own time. Um, so it, it's got its advantages and disadvantages. Um, you can work at your own pace. I've got video lectures posted so you can watch them again and again if you want, but it will it will require more time for most people than, than in person. So make sure you're aware of that. Um, before the course begins, uh, it, it officially opens Monday, but I want to make sure that everybody here uh, knows um, to get all the material posted under the the, the course information. The, the start here button really uh, um, will will get you what you need. Um, I would say you want to print out things like the the course schedule. Uh, I would want to print that out so that you would um, uh, let me just turn that on. Um, uh, so when it says court, you know the it, it says start here, and it has um, course information and documents there. The schedule is very handy. All the due dates are Sundays, so um, you should be able to keep that straight. And there's something due pretty much every Sunday. Uh, read through the syllabus. Um, make sure you understand everything before you uh, get started. Uh, I mean, understand what's graded, what's not, what's optional, what's not, and it really is all explained um, in there. You need some form of the book, but as we said, you can use my accounting lab for 14 days for free. So go ahead and get registered. At this point, if you're if you're reading this, you should be registered, uh, so you should be in the right one. Some other things here. Um, do I have to come to campus? Yes, there are three examples or three exams, sorry, and you do have to come to campus to take those. Each of those will be available in the testing center for at least uh, a week. So you can come anytime during that week that works for you. Uh, so you don't have to come on a specific day, but you do have to come on campus to take those exams. Um, there are deadlines, and again, they're all Sunday, so it's easy to keep straight. Uh, the course schedule has all your due dates. I will not accept late assignments on homework or quizzes, and uh, I won't extend due dates on those. So make sure you give yourself time. Again, everything's due on Sunday, so that kind of goes into this next one here. I strongly recommend you do not wait until Sunday night to get started on your assignments. Some of these assignments really do take hours to work on, and um, the quizzes, for example, I give you two attempts. Uh, everything's due at midnight on, if you wait till 10 o'clock, to try and do the homework and the quiz, you're just not giving yourself the best chance. So give yourself plenty of time to get this stuff done. Um, uh, nothing is uh, asynchronous, so it's not like we all have to be in a chat room at the same time or anything, and I don't have any group assignments in this work, in this course. Uh, it's designed to follow a 15-week regular semester, uh, So, but you can work ahead if you want. Again, if you're going to be out of time, like the next one um, says here, you could work ahead of time. Um, you can't work behind time, uh, but you you basically are you know chugging along with um, something due almost every week. If you're traveling, uh, you can access everything's you know online, so you can access it from wherever you are. If you don't want to have to deal with that, you can submit those assignments before you go because everything is posted ahead of time. And as far as contacting me, um, email is really the best way. I check that much more frequently. Um, I am not online 24-7. Uh, I think sometimes people think I am. So if you, um, y but you should have an answer within 24 hours. Uh, so if you haven't, go ahead and, and send me another email. But um, if you wait till 11.30 to start your assignment and you have a question, I'm probably not going to be online at 11.30 at night to answer your question. So um, how to do well in this course. Take responsibility for your own learning. Um, an online course really does require you to do a lot of teaching yourself. There's tons of tools in there, but you really need to be self-disciplined and self-motivated and um, take responsibility. There are a lot of tools available, and I'm going to show you another video where I show those. You may not want to use all of them, but um, you know, take a look at them. See what works for you. Uh, read the chapters. Uh, you know, you have a textbook, even if you're using the ebook. Read the chapters and look at the examples before you try to do the homework. Take your time. Give yourself 
the best chance to get the good grades. Uh, again, if you wait to the last minute, you're going to have to rush through it and you might not get full credit. So give yourself the homework. You get three attempts on all the problems. So give yourself a chance to, to get those highest grades. Don't procrastinate. Um, and, you know, I do the same thing. But again, you, you minimize your chances of getting a good grade if you do that. And if something goes wrong, um, then that's, uh, there are, computers available on campus and at the public libraries if you do not have the LSC is open every day even weekends if you don't trust your um, your internet connection at home do the work on campus um, uh, so just make sure you give yourself time make sure you give yourself time in case something goes wrong I will also tell you that those Sunday night due dates are pretty common and uh, the, the MyLab servers can be kind of slow on a Sunday night, so uh, things will run a little bit slower if you wait till Sunday night to do that because mm, all students across the, the nation are also waiting till Sunday night to do that. So if you can avoid that Sunday night, I do recommend that. Um, practice, practice, practice. That's how we use um, accounting. So um, there's loads of places to practice in my accounting lab, which I will show you, and so, uh, but it's up to you to do them and um, make sure you check your email, check the announcement section for any changes um, to the course schedule, which we really shouldn't have to worry about with an online one. Um, let, it, let me know if you're having trouble. If it's, if it's technical things with my accounting lab, there's really not much I can do with that, but they do have 24-hour um, help. You know, if you can't remember your password, there's nothing I can do as far as that, um, but they can help you with that. If it's about accounting, then you would, you would call me. Or not or email me or whatever and um, I'll show you a couple different ways to do that so I'm going to skip through this part because you should have already registered um, and so then let us go to the syllabus so I'm in our course now and so um, that was the orientation material I just looked at I'm going to pull up the syllabus now for you and then uh, we'll look at the due dates and um, and then I'll show you some other stuff so this is what we're doing right now is kind of what I'd be doing on the on the first day of class type of thing. So uh, the syllabus, let's just make that a little bit prettier. Okay, so here's our course. Um, those are my office hours. Since you're online, uh, I, I'm assuming you're probably not on campus much during the day. If you are, feel free to stop by during office hours. If not, just go ahead and email me. There's the textbook we're using. This is the peer student. So you need um, some form of the textbook. So uh, I think the copy that we sell in the bookstore is like a loose leaf three hole punch that you can put in a binder because that is the cheapest version. Um, you can use the ebook, uh, you, but you do need access to my accounting lab and you do need some form of the book, whether it's a used copy or a print copy or an electronic copy, that's completely up to you. The next section of the syllabus describes the student learning outcomes. That's the kind of fun stuff we're going to be doing this semester. So um, we have nine basic things, but we'll, um, uh, there's a lot of steps involved in, in getting those. And, um, and then the same book continues to Accounting 2. So if you take Accounting 2 in the spring, you won't have to purchase anything because the, the book that you're purchasing this semester is a, is a two-semester book. And the access code is for two semesters as well. So um, we'll do a lot of procedures, we'll do a lot of theory, but again, it's really important to, um, to practice what we're doing. You can't learn accounting by watching somebody else do it. So you really need to get in there and do it. So I have a lot of practice built into it. Your grade, um, you'll have, we cover 10 chapters in this book. So you have a homework assignment for each one. You have a quiz for each one. Um, so all the homeworks are 20% of your grade, all the quizzes, and then there are three exams, each worth 20% of your grade. So the homework is in my accounting lab. It is graded automatically, so you'll have your grade as soon as you do it. Um, they're, they're all have a specific due date. Um, the lowest grade, you have three attempts at each homework problem, and the lowest homework score will be dropped at the end of the semester. So if you miss a homework assignment, um, that's, that's the other reason I don't extend due dates on homework assignments because if you miss one, then that's the one that gets dropped. So just make sure you don't miss more than one. Um, I also have practice slash demo problem sets made up. Those are not part of your grade, but I do recommend those. And so my, my kind of video lectures will be based on those. And so I recommend uh, 
reading the chapter, looking at the examples, doing the practice demo set first, not part of your grade, practice what you're doing there, then do the graded homework assignment, and then the quiz. Um, the, uh, again, the quizzes will be in my econ lab, so the homeworks are problems. The quizzes are mostly multiple choice. Um, you'll have two attempts at each quiz, but again, if you, um, if you wait until it's almost 11 o'clock, then you don't have a chance to take that second attempt. So um, the quizzes are timed. They're very short, um, 10 questions, multiple choice. If you're prepared, most of these quizzes should take you um, uh, no more than 10 minutes. If you are leafing through the chapter for a lot of stuff, you might use the whole 30 minutes. I strongly recommend after you do the homework that you um, you kind of make yourself a cheat sheet for that chapter and use that when you're taking the quiz. If you do that, I bet you 10, 10 minutes is all you will need. Um, and then you have that cheat sheet already made when you get to the exam. So you could make your little cheat sheet, you could take your quiz, uh, go back and see what you got wrong and alter it and so you have a, a really handy study guide for when it comes to the exam time since the, the exams are weighted more heavily. Uh, so the lowest quiz grade will also be dropped. So again if you miss a quiz I'm not gonna I'm not gonna extend the due date on that but that will get dropped at the end of the semester so it won't count against you. Three exams uh, um, I used to actually do just two and I, I broke it down into three to try to make it smaller chunks so each exam is on three or four chapters. Um, they are a combination of problems and multiple choice. One attempt at those, you'll have two hours to complete them and they'll be taken at the Academic Testing Center. The exams are open book and open notes. Um, okay, so requirements. Um, uh, this is just talking about how much you have to read and expect to do time outside of class, but since this is an online class, uh, this is a, a basic uh, idea of where you'd be spending your time. That's different for everybody, but this is a, a kind of a general what you can expect in total. Um, and then there's some things like I'm not doing makeups, I've already said that. Attendance policy doesn't really apply, but I, I, we do still have to report um, attendance and participation on online classes. So if you're not participating in the class and that's considered not attending, um, I'm sure nobody's going to cheat, so we don't have to worry about academic integrity, uh, uh, special, uh, uh, disability services. If you have any combinations, you need to let me know ahead of time. And then here's a topical outline of the 10 chapters that we cover. You can see we're skipping chapter 7. So um, those are the chapters that we cover in Accounting 1, and then we pick up with chapter 12 in Accounting 2. And then the other thing I want to show you here is the course schedule, which, um, again, you can see they're all Sunday night due dates. Uh, I have a little orientation quiz due the first week, so you can see that one. Um, uh, it's really just to make sure you understand, you know, everything and you read the syllabus and you can find your way around. And then after that, um, each week there is a homework and a quiz due. And then this is kind of what we're working on. So sometimes I have kind of a week and a half per chapter. For example, you can see down here in this, in week seven, I don't actually have anything due because I'm giving you kind of a week and a half to do that one. Uh, you can actually you can do it ahead of time if you want, but I'm trying to build in a little bit of extra time for some of these in the same thing there with chapter nine. Uh, but you can kind of spread that out as you want. Um, uh, one thing I also wanted to point out, which it seems kind of obvious, but my due dates are Sundays. That obviously does not mean you have to wait till Sunday to do it. You can do it any time before then. That is the last possible day to do it. Um, some people like to get their stuff done during the week so that they have the weekend free. Some people work like crazy all week and they only have the weekend to do it, so that's why I have the due date set up that way. But just because, for example, Chapter 5 is due on, on October 23rd, you can obviously do it before that because after the exam you've got, you know, kind of a bit of a break there. So um, you should be working away on that, but you've got a little time built in there. So that's the basics of the course. Um, let me just, uh, I'll just go ahead and kind of continue in here. So um, some technical things, if you're having browser problems, you can update that. Um, where to get help, again, that includes technical help, that includes me, um, so those are just reference materials for you. Also down here you can see um, I have a couple of other videos here that my accounting lab put out 
helpful hints to try to make sure you understand all the tools that are in here and make sure you get the, the most out of it. So I really do. They're fairly short, but they're very good. I recommend you take a look at that. The next tab is videos, PowerPoints, and study guides. And right now, there's not anything in there. But each, I'm going to have a little video lecture for you for each chapter. What, uh, what it will essentially be, it'll look like this where it's a screen capture video. But it'll be me working through those practice demo problems I told you about. So there'll be some lecture, some problems. And so it's, it's me writing on a tablet solving problems is what it is. So you can use these, and then I'll post the PowerPoint that goes with it. You can use these however you want. You can work through the practice problems on your own if you want and then just go to the video to look at the ones that you struggled with. You can watch the video first and then um, go to uh, um, then go practice on the demo problems. You could skip the videos completely if you don't think you need them. Um, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So so when you when you see here for each chapter here's the practice demo problems and then there's the homework and there's the quiz. The practice demo are not part of your grades. It'll give you a grade, but it's not included in your grade book calculation. The homework is, you get three attempts at each of those, and then the quiz, you can see there's a time limit of 30 minutes and you have two attempts. So if you do all of this, there is a lot of time in there, but it, it, accounting does take a lot of time, so make sure you're prepared for that. The practice demo problems here, you can kind of see these are ones, and these are the ones I'll be sort of working out in the videos for the most part. Just let me show you a couple tools in here um, with the homework. Um, you've got, uh, you know, and again, give yourself a little time to get used to how um, my accounting lab works, how it wants it to put you in there, because what you really don't want to have is something where you understand the content, but you just kind of put it in wrong. That's why you have multiple attempts on the problem. You also have, on all the homeworks, you have this question help right here. Uh, this will link you right to the section of the e-text that is about whatever we're talking about. You have a calculator here, and you have an Ask My Instructor here. If you hit Ask My Instructor, it will send me an email, and I'll be able to see exactly the problem you're looking at. Everybody's got different versions of the problems, so um, uh, your problem might not look like somebody else's, so if you say I'm on number three, I still might not be able to answer it. But if you hit that Ask My Instructor, um, I'll be able to see exactly what you're looking at, which actually makes it a lot easier. I wanted to show you one other tool, which I'm pretty sure should be on here. So here's a homework example. Um, we'll do lots and lots of what we call journal entries. We'll work up to that, and um, it'll tell you if you got part of it right, and you can see if there's more parts. But um, uh, So this one, there are demo docs available. There's a video you could look at. These are all the publisher ones, and so you can get to all of these right in, um, right in here. And when we get to something a little more complicated, I don't think it might be in this chapter, but um, some of these problems, I'm going to pop down here to, uh, let's go to chapter three, homework. And um, this will be a big long problem here. And you should have something in the homework tools. And you can see where, where you're standing here. Uh, so cl clearly this is um, a little bit more involved. And so you have something called Help Me Solve This. And what Help Me Solve This does, it takes a problem exactly like this one with different numbers, and it works you through step by step by step and shows you how they got each number um, in a lot of detail. And so what you're doing is you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, here's how they calculate this. They use this number and this number and that's how they got this. And then you apply that to the problem you're doing. So help me solve this is a, some people actually use the help me solve this. I think when you have three attempts at the, at the homework, I, I'm not 100% positive to tell you the truth, but I think help me solve this takes one of your attempts, but you still have two more. And a lot of people, Oh, especially in these complicated ones, go right to the help me solve this, they work through it all that way, they learn how to do it from that, and then they do the homework. And that is perfectly fine if that works for you. Some people only use it when they get stuck, some people just want to see the problem worked out and that's how they learn. So um, lots and lots of tools on here. Um, a demo docs, again, is kind of a screenshotty kind of thing working through a similar problem. And you always have that Ask My Instructor. So um, lots and lots of different tools on here, and I'll show you some other ones. 
Uh, but those are all there to help you. And, you know, again, it, play with them at the beginning. See what, what works for you. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you about is the study plan. This is also not part of your grade, but it's a great way to do extra practice, especially if it's on something um, that you need uh, a little extra help on. So I'm going to click on View All Chapters here. Let's say you're working on Chapter 2. So I'm going to expand this Chapter 2 one. Oops, I think I'm going to. And here's all the different segments in there. So let's say you're working along and you're like, I'm fine with, with Objectives 1 and 2, but when I get to 3, I am just lost. And so you could go to that one. And here are all the problems really in this book related to that topic. You can work as many or as few of these as you want. Um, so you can, you know, you can just do a couple of them and say I'm good. You can do all of them. Maybe, you know, you did the problem and you're like, I think I got it right. I mean, I got it right, but I, I'm not quite sure. I'm just going to go do one more like this. Uh, and so this is for you to do, and again, these are not part of your grade. You can learn from these. You can get extra practice on these. You can do these to review for exam, however you want to do it. It has another feature. If you do this quiz me um, for the chapter, um, let me just go go back one here. Uh, you, it, what it'll do, if you take the quiz first, you can, um, uh, I guess you have to do it by each segment. It will, uh, anyway, let me show you another one. There's another little place where you can um, do practice here. If you go to take a quiz or test in the assignments, these quizzes up here are the ones that I made that are part of your grade, where you see these numbers right here. But if you go keep doing these sample tests and quizzes, those are not part of your grade. So if you just want extra practice with multiple choice or something like that, you can do these. Also, if you take a pretest here, anything you got right, it will take those problems out of the study guide. So what's left in the study guide is just the things that you need extra practice on. So um, those are, again, just an extra resource for you, but they are not part of your grade. So um, they might help you, they might not. I'll leave that up to you. Um, but that's the study plan in there, and it is really a great resource that um, I, I can tell you without a doubt, I have tons of statistics that show the more people use a study plan, the higher their grades are in this course. Absolutely, there's. I don't think I've ever had a case where it's not. So, uh, study plan usage and grades correlate directly. Um, so you can use that as you will. Results will be your grades, which right now you kind of don't have any. So um, uh, that's. But you know, again, if you do, oh, it's, I see, I started it, so it's showing that. So you can show um, um, your grade for the homework, the quizzes, and the tests, and see how you're doing. This is the e-text. So this is the entire textbook. Um, uh, you click on just right up here at the top, complete your Pearson e-text, the other stuff you don't really have to worry about. And that is the entire book that would be in print also online. So um, it's very handy because it's a big heavy book and so if you don't want to carry it around you've always got the e-text with you with Pearson as long as that's the, the version that you that you purchased. I didn't I, I was always I didn't like e-text I was definitely a paper book person but but I've really grown to, um, to to like this because you know you've got all these things in here and you can just um, you can search for a specific thing if you're looking for it you can change it to show two pages at a time instead of one you know you've got all kinds of things you can do in here that's that's really pretty handy and it's got all it's got all the problems that are in the book and so it's the entire book right there um, multimedia library and chapter resources are just some more tools that they have in here for you. Let's say I go to chapter two, you can do the homework and the test, um, but then there's also um, demo docs, uh, multimedia library, which will have um, that will have uh, PowerPoints probably in it. The, the publisher's PowerPoints are really, really long. Um, they've got a lot of stuff in there, but you can. Um, look for any other kind of thing. Let's say you use, I'm looking for videos or flashcards or uh, um, a PowerPoint. You know, click what you want and you'll find that right here. So here's the flashcards for this chapter. Here's the PowerPoint for that chapter. So um, lots and lots of resources there. Again, there's so much in here that I recommend at the beginning you take a look at different things and find out what works for you because it's almost too much to use, you know, 
all of this stuff. So, so poke around, see what, what helps you, what works. Um, communication tools, you can email me from there too if you want. Um, I'm not using any kind of live stuff and I actually don't have a discussion board going for this class either because um, in the past people just haven't really used it. So I think that's just about everything. I know it's a lot all at once, but take, um, take some time here at the beginning to look around, make sure you know where stuff is, and let me know if you have any questions. And um, I'm looking forward to a great semester.